What's up fellas? What we're looking at here is a 50 foot coil of stainless steel tubing. This is the 0 0.028 wall thickness. So this is the pretty stiff stuff. They, basically what we're doing here today is we're gonna try out an idea that a commenter left in one of my videos pertaining to bending stainless steel tubing coils. It's something that um, when you gotta do a lot of them, using sand and salt and all that stuff is just not an option. So, the idea worked out great, Alan. You rock, brother. Definitely glad I tried this. So it may take several pumps before we see any activity. Oh, look at that. That's on the third pump right there. We saw some action. It's probably gonna leak on us somewhere. There's the fourth pump. And at the fifth pump, we hit a thousand PSI's, but it's not holding. There could be a lot of reasons for that. It could just be bleeding out right here, and I think it is. But uh, we may have maintained a thousand PSI's in this tube, though. Okay, so with any luck, there should be about 1,200 PSI's of pressure in here. I'm not seeing any leak on this fitting, which is a good deal. These things typically don't hold pressure well over 75 PSI's on this type of stainless steel tubing. This is a welded stainless steel tubing, so it has an internal weld seam. The only way you can get these to hold pressure is with one of these bad boys right here. This is a diamond um, honing kit for flare fittings. It works for double flares and for single flares. Oh, look at that, guys. Do you see that? My Loctite ain't dry. I'll be damned. So after an entire day, this Loctite still wasn't dry. Those are some tiny micro bubbles there. I'm just gonna go for it. I ain't got time, man, I ain't got time. do my best to give it a uniform coil here. Uh-oh. Jackass. Didn't have my spindle end out all the way there. Okay, proceed, human. Hail well. Okay, now for the uh, fun and exciting part. Now, because of the size of this lathe, I am forced to roll the, the coil tight, and I then have to expand it. I then have to expand it using a screwdriver. So, not the ideal situation here. I'm gonna start off nice and slow. Just kind of see what it does. Uh, I'm sliding. I gotta get the gun. Alright, I gotta bring that down. So. Pink a little bit. count there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22. That's the magic number. Good old 22. Good old 22. Anybody else agree with that figure? We gotta get some music going in this place. Man. This is just ridiculous. Definitely a leather glove situation. Need something that's got some good lubrication when you're letting that coil slide out of your hand. This step is over. Now remove these jigs. 
So here's a close up of your work. And as you can see, the grease gun idea is definitely going in the toolbox. So, whatever your name was, your hire, I'm into it. Now, it doesn't always work out when you try other people's ideas. I did the gallium thing, and that was a nightmare. But hey, I got about $200 worth of gallium just sitting around whenever I need it now. <laughs> Okay, here's the next step. We gotta expand this coil. Man, this thing's a monster. This is gonna be an unruly beast. All right, this cat right here. Alan, you're hired, brother. It worked. And it worked good. So this is the kind of refining that we needed for this idea. This way. Okay, so this is where we are at this point in the build. The uh, jig worked out amazing. This mandrel worked out perfect. So this is basically a three-piece kit for the uh, three constituents of this boiler. We have a preheater, a boiler, and inside of there is our superheater coil. I didn't make the superheater coil run all the way through because this area act usually acts like uh, quite the combustion zone. All right, here goes. You guys see that okay? I'm hoping for a little squirt of some action. Oh, great. Damn it, China. Ugh, I said 11 millimeter. Oof. Oh, look at that. I got a squirt, fellas. Fantastic. <laughs> and that's just water. We might have pushed a little grease to the back end, but she held the pressure. All right, so it's official. That is gonna be the new process. The grease injection worked out far superior to the soap and ice which is just such a pain in the neck. Now, I don't have to flush the soap water out of here. So, there you go. I think we'll call that the, uh, the Allen method. How do you name a process in the world? I don't know, but that's what we're going with. I like it. So, here it is. One last look at the equipment display. It's not as easy as it looks, but I think after a couple of hundred tries, these things will be flying off the assembly line. Quick look at the mono tube boiler there. We're gonna be testing orifice sizes on this thing. But uh, this is pretty much the end of this video. We're not gonna show the steam axe in action. If you're interested to see what one of these can do and you haven't seen the steam machete yet, you might want to give that a little look because it's pretty awesome. So, I'm going to bed.